Always write as if you were speaking to someone in a pub, and it will sound great. Episode 116. Hello and welcome to the Business of Architecture UK. I am your host, Ryan Willard, and this week I am speaking with Tamir Kadar, who is the Chief Marketing Strategist at Francis Cooper. Tamir has been doing marketing for 20 years um, and now she's the Marketing Director, as I said, at large corporations and today is the CMO of Francis Cooper. She has helped the marketing of several companies in the construction industry from architects, builders, interior designers, bespoke furniture makers, estate agents, concrete polishers. Um, Her business won Best Marketing Consultancy in 2019 and best content marketing company in 2018 based on many of her campaigns and she also founded the London Marketing Club where business owners network and learn about marketing and this was a really fantastic conversation Tamir really knows her stuff and she was very insightful into illustrating some of the issues that architects face when they're doing their own marketing some of the common mistakes and she spoke a lot about the power of being able to diagnose your clients problems uh, and being able to understand those better than anybody else and being able to direct and Um, consider your language and your marketing assets into that problem, solving that problem. So this is filled with some real golden nuggets and a lot of fantastic experience and insights into how to successfully market your architecture practice. So sit back, relax and enjoy Tamir Kadar. So massive thank you to all of you for listening and supporting the Business of Architecture UK for the last couple of years. Big shout out to those of you who have come to our live events, attended the webinars, and of course to those of you who have downloaded the weekly podcast and have been listening to them on your bicycles. And as you know, we love helping architects win meaningful and profitable work, but it's not always that simple to implement these ideas or translate them into something that will work for you. So what I wanted to do was to invite you onto a quick 15 minute chat with myself we can both grab a cup of tea and I'd like to ask you about what content you found most valuable and why and what you'd like to hear more of and I'd also love to hear more about your business and what you're building at the moment and where you are headed to business wise in 2020 so there's no charge or any obligation with this call just simply to find out how our content has been of value and if we get that far and with your permission of course what might be next what might be possible and how Business of Architecture UK could be supportive of that. Does that sound fair? Brilliant. So if you want to book a 15-minute chat with me, I'm calling these calls the BOA UK Discovery Call or just simply a chat with Ryan. Use the link in the information and I look forward to speaking to you. Hello and welcome to the Business of Architecture UK. I'm here sitting looking at the Thames with Tamir Cardia. Hello, hi. Hi, Leanne. Thanks for the invitation. My pleasure. Um, So you are a marketing consultant. You work with numerous people in the property industry, property consultants, construction industry, uh, and also our dear friends, the architects. Yeah. Um, And we we were just talking earlier, actually, about some of the some of the common mistakes that architects make and you were uh, using this analogy of the diagnosis and the importance of you know being like a doctor almost mm-hmm. in terms of that's what your sort of duty is to be able to find out about your clients and how a lot of industries are not just us architects that are guilty of doing this that we often see marketing as just a brochure or a wrapping or a kind of outbound thing as opposed to a sort of a dialogue. So Absolutely. I think I'd like to start there. So, you know, from, from your perspective, mm-hmm. what, is, what is this idea of diagnosis? Yeah, so, you know, the, uh, talking about the mistakes, uh, when I meet an architect in their studio, I, obviously they show me the amazing projects they've done and, you know, we can talk about that for hours, really. And what we really don't talk about it is the client. What, what was the original problem of the client? Where did they start? Because when obviously showing these wonderful and uh, photos of the of the of the wonderful projects they have made is is amazing it's it's attractive but the next client wants to see their problem solved so those projects are nice and it's very nice for justification and credit credibility uh, but this is somebody else's house and somebody else's store i would like to see what 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 do you, what you do with my problem so this 
is what is really needed to see everything from the client's perspective. And the client is not a target audience, it's a, a person that we should imagine and we should talk to and, and, and put ourselves in that person's shoes and see their problems and their living situation in, when we talk about architects. So how, right. how, how can we start to get into the mind of mm -hmm. our, our clients? What's the sort of process to... Because then it's really interesting that you say that because it just... You know, the natural tendency is when we've done some work, we want to show it off and mm. we want to show the beautiful the, the beautiful details mm. and the drawings. And obviously so many clients, it's the first time they've ever used an architect, particularly mm -hmm. in residential. Mm -hmm. it's, it's not in their world, perhaps. They, they, they haven't spent the years and years looking through beautiful architectural buildings to be able to distinguish what's good and what's bad. Yes, and this is exactly the point that obviously architects are doing it every day and, and it's very natural for them and in, in some way live in a bubble and a lot of things are evident for them and as you point out quite rightly for the client it's a little bit also intimidating like I don't mm. even know how the whole process goes, what's involved, what I should tell you what I shouldn't so yes it's not only the the uh, the, the you know the the the, 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 ar the the architecture but it's I just don't know anything about it and I don't know how it goes so that's how we started is asking the client that's the easiest part and it's nothing you don't need any technology you don't need anything just ask the client I always work with with buyer personas by the way which is uh, working on a client, not just a type, but I imagine an, ac an actual person there uh, with all the background, all their, their goals, all their desires, really actually written. It's like uh, thinking of a character for a, for a film or for a book, really, and, and it works perfectly. And, and you can do it if, if you ask them and if you listen to them. You don't try to convert their uh, uh, you know sentences into something uh, in, into your terminology but you listen to really to them and then you answer that that question that they ask in their language right so it's actually the kind of the actual vocabulary and words absolutely that they are using yeah. and not us trying to turn it into archi speak yes because it happens very easily that of course i understand what you're saying and immediately repeat it with my words but no you would like to you know you have to hear your words and that's the easier thing to do in marketing and just listen to the client use their words and why, and why is it important to use their words as opposed to our words because they uh, that is what they can identify with that is when they realize that yes you understand me that is the role of marketing and it is the role of a doctor just imagine when you go to a doctor okay any architect can imagine it you everybody has been there unfortunately and you're just you know talking about your problems and then they immediately give you back the uh, the explanation and the diagnosis in Latin and then you're just <laughs> sitting there completely intimidated and oh my god yeah what are you saying so yeah no you have to repeat it in in their words and then you can offer a solution a cure a pill uh, and there you can be credible when you really show something so this is the point and not starting the other way around this is the point when you can talk a little bit about okay how we do it you can use a little bit of terminology but always explain with their words what it means and then they feel safe and we say that yes you got me you understand me and then I'm in good hands and I don't even want to look around and see others because I can feel that you got me and you understand me and, and so what would you su suggest as a process or, or what kinds of questions are good questions to ask our clients yes yeah, so originally when I as a marketer when I when I, I work, I always, I always want to t talk with the clients of my clients, yes, because that is when the, when the real treasure and gold mine is. Uh, what I usually do is, you know, when people, you ask them first, okay, what's your problem? Or, or, or you go there and just look at their situation. They try to be a little bit, a bit formal, okay? So they try to be very composed and look smart. Of course, we all want to look smart. Everybody, I want to look smart. But if you start, you know, talking a little bit more, they open up and then you have to see the lines behind the lines what they are saying okay so all those emo emotions that are that are like that probably they are just kind of they they are ashamed of the the house where they live they don't want to invite uh, guests but they will you know all that shame is there you have to feel that shame there behind they, they will just tell you that okay yeah it would be good to refurbish but you know there is always always an emotion there so the the, the biggest question is that uh okay 
always try to uh, diagnose how they live now. They cannot tell you what they exactly want. It's your job to give them, uh, it's an architect's job to give them the diag diagnosis, but they can talk about what, how they feel now. And this is something that we have to uh, diagnose, that we have to ask them about. So it's really getting to the emotional drivers Absolutely. Behind there is why. always an emotional drive wh why they want something because I don't know the family, they have a bigger family than they want to have, you know, enough space and a very nice, you know, home is so much about and even when it's commercial, it, it always has emotion, emotion when it's commercial, then you want to have business success, right? You have to have clients, so there's always emotion there. So, so that's, that's the kind of questions or the listening that we should be doing with new or prospective clients, what are the sorts of questions that we should ask our existing clients or ones that we finished working with perhaps? Um, you know why existing clients are good uh, is that we can use them if, you know, usually with architects it's a huge plus that you usually develop a very good relationship yes. with them. So they are very good to go back and see the whole process. It's a very good learning for marketing as well. Also for obviously for the for the service, but now I'm talking about marketing. So we should really find out where we started with. What did we start with? Right. Uh, what, what did you want there? How, how did you feel there and how you feel now? And it's very good to go through uh, through it with them because then you can use this for your next um, uh, client. But what you should ask them uh, if you're asking for testimonials or for case studies. Usually people have testimonials which is about, oh, we loved it, we loved him, we would recommend him, this is a testimonial. But a case study differs in a way that we show where they st where, what was the or original problem. Where did we start with? What were the obstacles in a way that we managed to remove? And where did we end up with? How does the client feel now? So then we really can uh, uh, draw a, uh, a picture, paint a picture with a case study. And this is where the existing clients can be very good for. It's, it's really interesting um, hearing you say that, actually, that kind of focus on the feeling and the things that a client will say back to you can be very surprising. And I often hear architects, um, they will perhaps uh, explain why they think the client chose them mm -hmm. or why they think mm -hmm. the client thought it was a good job and then you ask the client and they will say some totally different absolutely yes and this it, this is this is a very good learning point and when you write about it in your in your marketing or when you talk about it your next client will click with that so we kick much better with an original situation of another client than with the, you know, photo of the end uh, uh, project, which is still important. So don't take me wrong, and nobody should now get out of it that don't show the, the project because you should. But that doesn't come as the first one. That is just as a support, a justification of the fact that yes, I can do it. Mm. So actually, so actually, kind of jumping in, the first thing is not. The portfolio is not the beautiful no, images. No, it's the it's problem. It's yeah. not the plan. It's no, actually yeah. the problem and diagnosing the problem first. And yes, actually, my you know I have um, in marketing and uh, a system, an epic system, which is uh, the first one is not even the problem is exciting someone because people will listen to me only if I excite them first. So if I have something to tell them, something to ask them, which they just, you know, which will make them sit up. Yes. Wow, that's interesting. But it can be anything. It can be just, you know, any, any, any fact or something, a story or something like that. And then the problem. Okay, yeah. so that's really interesting as well then. So I can imagine, and again, I'm, I'm trying to um, d distinguish between the, you know, what I might think of with my architect hat mm -hmm. on and then what, I'm, what a client might think of, because the two are going to be different and it and if I was thinking of something that was tantalizing or exciting mm -hmm. my brain immediately goes to an image of a building <laughs> yes but what? but something tantalizing that might make a client sit up what might that be you know if I if we talk about you know it's we talk about marketing it's not only the consultation they have but it can also be if I tell a client that do you know like how we started this one the biggest mistake that clients make or uh, 
you know, can, do you know, like if it can be even in content marketing, a checklist of all the things, how you find out if you found the best architects. This is exciting. Of course, I want to know. Or uh, how do you find out if your architect is really the best one? You know, because this is what clients are struggling with. Again, this is a struggle. Not only that's a struggle how the architect will work on my, my home, but is it the right one? How do I find out? Yeah, I have a few quotes. Oh, how do I know what's included? If I promise someone that, and this is in a title, this is in a, in a blog post, this is the video post, whatever, mm -hmm. you know, then it will make people sit up. Then I talk about the problem, that you struggle, that you have a few quotes, you don't know if that architect is the best one. Seems like a nice guy, but how do you know? This is the problem. And then in the epic system, then I illustrate the solution. Illustrate is not describe. This is an other mistake that architects disc are describing technologies and you know all the things they use behind the you know all the plans a plan is a description kind of thing illustrating meaning is demonstrating is showing is showing the emotion that is the 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 eye in epic right and c is closing Got kind it. of yeah so that is the point of marketing is actually closing and coming to a conclusion so I promise you to do something and then we are coming to the conclusion that I will be able to do it and you will be able to take the value out of it. And this, is, the price I'm giving you is very good compared to the value I'm giving. Got this it. is epic. Well, th th this, is, this is fascinating. And um, just going back to that, that idea of describing, because this is something that I see a lot with architecture practices and when I'm in discussions, and I get, I'm, you know, I get seduced by the technology that's being used, you know, virtual reality or uh, photogrammetry or these kinds of, you know, the superb, fascinating innovations in mm -hmm. the tech mm -hmm. that, mm -hmm. you know, architects love to relish in. Mm -hmm. But for, for a client, and we will often sell that to the client as like, you know, we do this, this mm -hmm. is the most mm -hmm. modern, innovative ways. Absolutely, of yeah. And then it's just... It's a description, it's yes, a description. <laughs> and doesn't say anything. It, you have to use some techniques to say, maybe, can you compare it to something? It is as if you had this and that in your flat or in your apartment, or just describing how will you feel when you, in your family it happens. It's exactly like the same with smart homes, and I think they are starting to, you know, be good with that because originally with smart homes they just talked about all these gadgets. Nobody was interested, but now they describe a situation where you just I know is sitting on the other sofa and you know I don't know the pizza guy is coming, but your your children are sleeping already. You don't want the bell ring, and you know, and this is a, oh my god, that's great. Now I want want it otherwise I don't want a smart home or I don't want another gadget I don't want the guys you know being in, you know mm. so these are the things to to illustrate and I know it's difficult because yeah we are excited I mean even now I have to hold myself back not to talk you know technical about buyer persona because I know that the listeners are not ones not marketers so we have to do that switch in our brains everybody everybody even I I have to do that yes yes yeah it, it's it's something that we're often we're passionate about and we're yeah. excited about the, the bits of the process yes and we are proud about we yes. are proud of uh, quite rightly why not so architects I work with absolutely have every right to be proud of and I could never do what they do with those beautiful buildings right so but and and of course I just kind of want to show off in a nice way and just show that yes yes choose me because I've done that but unfortunately it's not how the the buyer's brain works and we have to just understand that so this epic system then how does it manifest itself or how, how what sorts of what sorts of physical things or actual things to, would you suggest architects are doing in yeah. terms of marketing? I mean, I, I mean things like brochures, websites, mm -hmm. social media. Absolutely. So this Epic system is wonderful because it applies to anything really, offline, online, uh, whatever you do, it applies. You, you always start with exciting problem, illustrating the solution and closing, right? So uh, whatever, if you have like your website, which I always recommend to be also as a kind of 
landing page, which means that it has a purpose to come out. It's not a brochure website to show your projects, but you want the customer to get in touch or you want them to download something probably because you have a wonderful checklist to ask from your architect. And of course, I would like to download it. It's exciting to me. And when you have the emails of those customers, then you can send them other interesting stuff while they will find out this is what we call attraction marketing. They will be attracted to you. And this is the architect's I work with find out that, oh my God, they are attracted to me. I don't have to kind of chase clients and they will not ask f f for uh, under price quote, quotes because they, they just love that architect they are in touch with. And then you can also use it in content marketing. So when you write posts and all the other stuff and, you know, first you always start, start exciting. That's the title of a post or, you know, that starts with. And, you know, architects know a lot about obviously their job and how it's done, all the process, all the brand info, all the, the, the traps, all the, uh, the annoying things in the industry. And they, they are in the power of uh, kind of protecting prospective clients from all those. They just would have to write about it. So there's plenty of, you know, source of content for them. So, I mean, one, one thing that's, um, that comes up a lot is that architects, we're very good at, we're pretty good at marketing to each other. Mm. And we're pretty good at, like, communicating mm -hmm. to other architects. And, you know, this probably has all sorts of reasons for it from the way that our training is, is conducted. And, and that is actually something that's quite important um, for, for a lot of us is to be well, in fact, in some times, maybe to the detriment of a business, um, to be perceived as a good architect by other architects mm -hmm. who you respect <laughs> yes. is almost more important than even winning work. Yeah, it's uh, amazing that you say that. <laughs> this kind of pride is in the way of good marketing sometimes. Why? Because if you don't use terminology in your uh, work, then your uh, competitors or other architects will say, oh my God, how it's written. And that is when you win business. Yeah, you have to decide. And we never, in marketing, we never want to impress our competitors. Will they buy from us? If they yes, if yes, then yes. But they won't. So who I want to impress? The client. Who will buy from us? Oh, yeah. Yes. Yeah, well, th yeah. Th th this, is, this is fascinating because this is, um, there's, it, it's logical as well, right? Mm. Like on the, on the one, yeah. one level, it's like, mm. well, of course I don't, I'm not selling to other architects. But emotionally, mm. there's the want and the need and the sort of the the desire to um, yeah to impress yes. to, to impress yes. our peers the, the, prof yes. the professional and, and and I think it's in every industry but in architects is probably even more so because of the you know because it's also aesthetics so yeah the imp impress others impress industry is probably a very strong drive and. Yeah, then the client is lost a bit. Then I think you put, I think you put it very clearly like that. It's the pride that can actually get yeah. in the way of yeah. of marketing effectively. Yeah, and, I, and I've spoken to uh, marketers. Uh, I was speaking to a marketer once, and he was telling me that sometimes the best looking design for a website mm. isn't the one that converts yeah. the most that's, that's sales. That's perfectly said. Yes, and yeah. and you have to swallow it as a designer. You have to kind of swallow that pill. That it's yeah. it's not it, you know where yeah. where do you want to go? And, yes. I, and I suppose the the other question that that brings up then and I mean, you know I'm kind of I'm kind of taking the stance of my architect ha hat on here. <laughs> right? um, the the it's it's also important for architects to make sure they're attracting the right kinds of clients. Mm -hmm. Yes, yeah, that is and, really true. Yeah. And, and and also that um, I suppose it's there's there's the civic sense of responsibility of an architect mm -hmm. that mm -hmm. we're not mm -hmm. we don't always see that we're designing for clients mm -hmm. but we're also designing for people who aren't paying for it yeah as well yeah that's ha amazing that's beautiful and, and it is mm -hmm. but how do we it gets i'll tell you i'll <laughs> tell you how that uh, your connection with your prospective client doesn't start with that first meeting when you go there and you, when you find out out things about them but this is why we use content marketing and this is how it can help and this is so easy to do. Just talk about it in, mm. you can do it in video podcast or, or, or written, it doesn't matter the form and you don't even have to do it yourself. You, if, you, if you record it on a, if the architect's one is, prefers to talk, then somebody else can type it down, you know. But the main thing is to talk about these things, exactly this, the traps, why we do it, what's the mission, that is, we, we really do it for the whole environment. 
uh, we can talk about all the traps we would like to 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 protect the the uh, our client from and here comes the the fact that yes they don't want to attract the you know those clients who don't want to pay just one the cheapest but let's talk about it let's talk about the all the pros and cons of uh, of uh, low pricing mm. if somebody is pricing low what you risk with it you can put it on your website you can put it on a, in content marketing just talk about it so it doesn't start and by the time i get to the client they have an understanding of me if i talk about these things right. or if i write about these things and they will pick me because of this and not, I will not just be one of the architects they will listen to, and I will be in control, because you know it's always um, uh, to, to it, it should be. A, um, it's not that I'm begging the client to get me. It's not. The, it's it's you know we are, it's a win-win, and this this is what we can do with the good marketing really to have the right clients. Right. So so it's it's, it's kind of very much positioning yourself absolutely as, yeah. as someone who's an, an authority and an educator. Yes. Yes, and if you want to be an educator, just remember are the best teachers we can remember were, the, were those the ones who just stood there and they didn't get any touch, uh, didn't get in touch with us and just used all the terminology. No, they were the ones who told us stories. They were the ones who just, you know, were at the same level with us and really talked to us in our language. Right? Yes. Those are the teachers we remember. So architects should be teachers like that. So. So, uh, producing a kind of uh, uh, like a wave of content is mm. what, what, you're, what you're suggesting, and, and to be able yes. to, to sort yes, yes, this is what I'm suggesting. And, and okay, <laughs> so ha how how what would you s how what are the best ways to do that in terms of yes, okay, content? So how can how can architects do it? The first thing that is the easiest to do is to get all the questions we always get from clients, right, and just answer those. That's it. Just look at the go through all the consultations you have with your client take down all the questions look through all the emails they ask you after the price code or they ask you answer those that's it and then of course it's good to do some search online as well what are the questions what the questions are that are asked but usually the major topics which always trend very well is talking about the mistakes or the traps in the industry or how to articles how to uh, how to find out about your architect how to brief them how mm -hmm. to you know all this stuff and of course in architects specifically it goes very well when they show these case studies if you have a very i don't know if you do an extension and what are the ways of doing you know so they can really talk about this it's really industry specific that they can really show and here you can sh show photos okay so uh, you can not only show that this was our, uh, our, our our project that we are very proud of but then you can show that okay this is how you can solve a problem and you know you and have plenty of content and, and, and is there uh, one medium that is better than another medium mm. or, or there are certain mediums that you, you would you think every architect should be using or it can be uh, it's kind of it's kind of you know if if if, if you're speaking of social media then obviously LinkedIn and Instagram and all the stuff but uh, because then you know it's one thing producing the content you also have to distribute it but I would definitely produce blog written content for Google and we also now have to think of the voice uh, searches um, so Google is really so for Google it's, it's written content and it's up to them because for an architect it's very good to have video content as well because because they have s some things to show, they can to go to clients. They can show it. I think it would. It's it's a huge thing, and yeah, podcast is really up to them. It's not ev it's not for everybody, you know. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. That can, that, that, that it, it depends who you're going to be speaking to, and yeah, how you can. Yeah, it's not for everyone. You have to be composed. You have to be entertaining. But the written content is great because then you have time to put it together and you have time to write it down. Just write with your words. Always write as if you were speaking to someone in a pub, and it will sound great if you just. Talk talking to a client and just, you know, just, just answer the, the questions of the client. You know, all the, in all the websites, the most visited page is the FAQ page because people want to see what others ask. And on Architects page, I don't see it. Does it mean that they are never asked anything? It doesn't. No, they, they are as the same. You are always asked the same questions. They are the same misunderstanding from, from clients, right? Or when you send a price code, they come back to you with the same things. Can we do this, this, and that? Then just write a post about it. These are the five most misunderstood you know, things that are in architecture, and everybody would want to read it, right? It's so, it's so, it's so interesting. I mean, it's like, um, I mean, even now, my, one of my, the, the, 
videos that's got the most views that I've ever published on anything mm -hmm. was yeah. how, much, how much would my extension cost. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and that is huge. Nobody's talking about the pricing. Yes, we have to talk about, uh, we have to have a consultation before that. Yeah, of course you cannot talk about the price, but at least the pricing structure. At least you can talk about what's involved and what's not, what you should look out for when you get that price tag. Why not to go, what you risk when you go with the, the cheapest one. What You can write about it, amazing, yeah, exactly. The, the, the other thing, because it's, it's interesting as well, the, the, the like producing content and kind of being a little bit of a, a sort of a media company and taking that on as mm -hmm. an architect and what it is that you choose to present. Do you think things like, you know, documenting the inner life of the office is a useful thing to, be, to be displaying? Absolutely. That is, you know, I just don't want to kind of frighten everyone because there's a lot of types of content. And But that's exactly because people don't know about uh, uh, architecture or how an architecture practice works. It, it can be interesting, even a diary of an architect. But even if you do that think of the client so it's not to show off it's not to pride it's because the client just would like to have a sneak peek so it's absolutely perfect and just a little bit you know if somebody is you know just starting out now just start with blog post i don't know every month just start it really and just write it down it's it's not that you have to have because obviously i do a content strategy and calendar and stuff like that but don't even don't do that just start with something answering clients questions Put it on the website. Start with that. Okay. So I don't want to kind of overwhelm anybody by saying that yeah, do a, a huge, huge content calendar. But exactly, yeah, behind the scenes themes are amazing and would be great. Brilliant, to do. Tamea. That's been absolutely fantastic. Thank a well, you. A whirlwind of, of brilliant expertise. If people want to get in touch with you and and work further with you, what's the best way for them to do that? Yeah, I run London Marketing Club events, and then it's it's for for business owners and it's uh, who who would like to come network together and also to kind of learn about marketing in a very uh, lighthearted way. So it's not very uh, heavy. So they, if they look for London Marketing Club, they will find me, and I'm very happy to have at one of my events. Perfect. Thank you. I'll put all the information in the uh, in the bio. Thank you very much, Ian. It was my pleasure. Thanks. Sure, thank you. Thank you. And that's a wrap. Thank you so much for listening. And don't forget to book your 15-minute chat with me by using the link in the information. I look forward to speaking with you. The views expressed on this show by my guests do not represent those of the host and I make no representation, promise, guarantee, pledge, warranty, contract bond or commitment except to help you be unstoppable.